Boo. So you might be wondering where I've been for the past four months. If you told me three years ago that in the future there'd be a laptop that could multitask while barely getting warm without a fan, with a fantastic display, keyboard and trackpad, capable of high performance while sipping battery life, all for a thousand freedom dollars, I'd call you crazy. This is the M1 MacBook Air. This is the laptop I've used for nearly five months at this point, and I'd like to share my experience using this laptop as a student. Let's get started. <laughs> Let's get started by talking about the build quality. Even coming from a 2015 MacBook Pro, which is already very nice feeling, this MacBook takes it to a whole new level in my opinion. The hinge is much nicer and much more refined, and closing the lid feels and sounds so much nicer. In typical MacBook fashion, the lid can be opened with one hand, which is a small touch that makes a huge difference on the overall experience of the Mac. The fit and finish is just much nicer, and everything feels like a more refined version of everything I loved about my previous MacBook Pro. The aluminum chassis feels solid all around, although it doesn't feel as solid as my 2015 MacBook Pro, which is more sturdy feeling because, like, you know, it's thicker. Now, I've had this MacBook for almost five months now, and it's taken its fair share of love taps. Here's a dent and a scratch from where I dropped this mug on it. And uh, here's a mystery dent on the corner that just appeared one day. The keyboard is well worn from frequently typing essays and notes and the screen is starting to show these scratches. I actually love these tiny cosmetic imperfections that my Mac has because it kind of adds a little character and a little personality to it. There's a certain charm to having a device gracefully age with you while you use it throughout life. And none of these imperfections actually change how I use the device and I'd say the machine has held up quite nicely. One more thing, the space grave finish on this MacBook is absolutely gorgeous. It looks so sleek, sexy, and modern, and it also kind of gives a futuristic vibe. And the tapered edge makes the thing look like a spaceship, which is pretty awesome. The Apple logo is stainless steel. I kind of missed the glowing logo from my old MacBook, but honestly, it doesn't really matter, and the device does look a lot more sleek this way. All right, so how's the keyboard? This is the Apple Magic Keyboard, which was introduced in 2019 on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which replaced the Butterfly Keyboard, which was absolutely horrible fucking garbage. It was notoriously unreliable, and it failed even if you just use it like normal. Dust got under the keycap? Oh no! Keyboard replacement. The Magic Keyboard doesn't have this issue, and this MacBook is proof of that. I live like an absolute pig, and I eat at my computer keyboard, and you can actually kind of see the crumbs in the keys. Absolutely filthy. But the keyboard still functions perfectly. Although, how does it actually feel? Well, it's nice, crispy, and clicky, comfortable for typing for hours on end without getting tired. I've written so many essays, scripts, done so much homework on this keyboard, and it's still held up perfectly. It's also backlit, so if I'm in like a darker environment, the keys still shine right through. Key travel is still okay, I'm fine with it, but it would also be nice if it just had a touch more key travel. That's wishful thinking on a laptop this thin though. Oh, and I don't know if I have oily fingers or whatever, but it seems that the keycaps wear down really, really fast. Even after less than a month, I already started to see the keys start wearing down. Now, after almost five months, you can really tell which keys I've used the most. It might be because my fingers are oily, but apparently this is normal for the type of plastic Apple uses with their keyboards. That kind of sucks because I wanted my keyboard to look nice and pretty for a long time. So if this annoys you, this is something you gotta keep in mind. Overall, the keyboard is very comfortable and durable. I enjoy using it as a student and it's just nice to use generally. So yeah, great keyboard. Other than the keyboard, the other component of a computer that you touch on a daily basis is the trackpad. The MacBook Air has a big chungus matte glass trackpad and it feels just awesome to use. Now, this trackpad is a sneaky boy. It doesn't really move or click. There's a little vibrator motor inside the trackpad that vibrates in real time when you click it and it feels kind of stunning when you use it for the first time. You can customize the feel of the trackpad. There's also a feature called Force Touch where you can force people to touch you. Just kidding. You can use it to look up text, fast forward videos depending on the pressure you're applying, and a bunch of other cool things. Overall, this haptic trackpad is pretty awesome, and I am hard pressed to find a similarly premium feeling trackpad on Windows PCs, except maybe the Dell XPS line and the Microsoft Surface line of computers. Overall, this is a wonderful trackpad, nice, big, and customizable, and I just love touching it. FBI, open up! That trackpad is five months old, you sicko! Okay, so what about the ports? Well, my old 2015 MacBook Pro had two USB-A ports, MagSafe, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, HDMI, SD card slot, and a headphone jack. Saw a bunch of I.O. This new MacBook Air, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a headphone jack. That's it. 
Now, while I initially thought this was a stupidly comical amount of ports, I actually don't mind the port that much. USB-C is actually kind of a really versatile port, and I like how I can have everything plugged into the adapter, and then just plug the adapter into my MacBook, and then I can just unplug the adapter when I need to go into laptop mode, and I don't have to unplug every individual thing. So honestly, the ports are fine. One of the newer features on the newer 2022 MacBook Air was the revival of MagSafe. Basically, it saves your laptop from falling if you ever trip on the cord. Once at school, I accidentally tripped over a MacBook Air with MagSafe, and half of the laptop was hanging over the desk, but it survived. This MacBook Air doesn't have MagSafe. So if you do trip over this little dingus, that might be one thing to consider if, you know, you're debating between the M2 and the M1 MacBook Air. Now let's move on to the part of the computer that you stare at the most. Of course, I'm talking about the excellent Retina display. Now this display is absolutely wonderful, and while it's not 120Hz, the animation in macOS are still super smooth, and it doesn't really feel like 60 hertz. It feels a lot smoother just because of the animations. And you're not gonna be doing any gaming on this thing, so why do you need 120 hertz? <laughs> the display is sharp, and I have no problem with the resolution of 2560 by 600, and from normal computer usage distance, individual pixels are indistinguishable from each other. The colors are vibrant, and the display at 400 nits does get bright enough for everyday use, although in some cases, I wish it went a little brighter. In terms of viewing angles, they're wonderful. Just look at those wonderful, wonderful viewing angles. This display also has True Tone, which adjusts the white balance of the display to match the lighting condition you're in. I used to dismiss this feature as a gimmick, but since beginning to use it on both my iPhone and my Mac, I can say that it's definitely helped with reducing eye strain in lower lighting conditions, at least for me. As for external displays, as you can see here, the M1 MacBook Air can support one external display with up to 6K resolution at 60Hz. That's not an issue for me since I only use this 1080p monitor, and it shouldn't be an issue for most people looking to buy a MacBook Air, but if you did want to have a cool multi-display setup, well, sorry buddy, you can't do that on the MacBook Air. Although if you were wondering, you can still technically have a triple display setup by hooking up your iPad to your MacBook while having the larger second monitor as well. If you have a newer iPad, and it doesn't have to be crazy new, like this is the base model budget iPad from 2020, you might be eligible to use the features Universal Control and Sidecar. Sidecar is extremely useful for me. It basically turns your iPad into a second screen for your MacBook. It's really come in clutch for me when I'm like out and about and I desperately need the extra screen real estate. Universal Control, on the other hand, I haven't really found a practical use for it, but it's pretty cool because you can literally use your MacBook's keyboard and trackpad with your iPad. It's kind of crazy. Also, one last thing. I do have one dead pixel on the MacBook Air. It's not a huge deal, but uh, it is a dead pixel and it kind of annoyed me when I first noticed it. So yeah. So generally the display is pretty solid. It's sharp, it's got great colors, it get pretty bright. Eight out of 10, nice. So I can safely say that these speakers are solid. These speakers still sound pretty great. They get pretty loud, especially considering how small they are. Another thing that I found interesting was the microphone placement. And this new MacBook Air has the mic in the grill on the left. This is pretty cool because now the laptop looks even more minimal. Hi, so um, this is a test of the microphone and the webcam on the M1 MacBook Air. Granted, the lighting isn't the best here, but you can kind of see how crappy the, the webcam is on this thing. So um, yeah, crappy webcam, but it's got a great microphone. Hello, hello. Actually, let me turn the mic. Here it is with uh, proper room lighting. Again, it's not the greatest. It, it'll certainly do the job for like Zoom meetings and stuff, but not the greatest webcam. Also, a feature I'm using right now is continuity camera, where you can use your iPhone as a webcam for your computer. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this ingenious setup. I'm saving like 30 bucks right here by taping my phone to the laptop. Now let's talk about the battery life. If I have to sum it up in two words, God tier. The M1 MacBook Air has some of the best battery life on a laptop out there, and that's thanks to Apple's M1 chip, which we'll talk about in a bit. Apple claims that the M1 MacBook Air has 18 hours of battery life, but that's by playing a video, and that's not a really realistic workflow. In the real world, I can get around six to nine hours, nice, of screen on time, and the laptop can definitely last an entire day of typical use. And once I didn't even have to charge it for two days when I was just doing basic tasks. Two days. 
Of course, battery life does vary with what you do on the Mac. If I'm playing Minecraft, it's gonna die a lot faster than if I'm writing a document on Google Docs. But generally, the battery life is pretty crazy. And even if you do run out of power, the MacBook Air only uses a 30 watt power brick and can even be charged by my phone's power bank. It charges pretty insanely slowly with that thing, but it does charge, which is great. So, great battery life in the M1 MacBook Air. So, the most impressive thing about this device, performance. Now, if I was a lazy YouTuber that just bought the computer because it's relevant, I'd run some benchmarks and call it a day. Thankfully, I'm a lazy YouTuber who doesn't care about benchmarks, so here's my review of the performance of the M1 MacBook Air in plain English. To keep it simple, this laptop will crush pretty much anything you throw at it. A crap ton of Chrome tabs handles it just fine. I can have 30, sometimes even 40 or 50 Chrome tabs open for school, Spotify in the background, Notion, some other apps like OneNote all open, and the computer barely gets warm. It's Really crazy if you think about it. It is important to note that my computer does have 16 gigabytes of RAM, whereas on the standard model, you're only getting eight. But even then, there shouldn't be a huge difference in terms of performance. The M1 chip really is just that efficient. So if your workload looks like a bunch of web browsing, productivity and note-taking apps, or maybe all of those at once, this laptop will handle it just fine. So what about professional level apps? Well, the MacBook Air isn't exactly built for professional apps. To everyone's surprise though, this laptop handles most of these apps like a champ. I've done some coding before, nothing big really, but a little bit of coding on this laptop and it's handled it perfectly fine. Also some light Photoshop for school, YouTube thumbnails, and uh, it's all handled it without a stutter. Mostly though, I use this thing for video editing using Apple's Final Cut Pro app. Well, you know, the trial version because I'm a broke high school student. <laughs> this laptop edits quite smoothly. I can have my timeline open, I can scroll through, I can cut, I can do whatever I want with it, and uh, playback runs just fine. It, doesn't really stutter, doesn't really drop any frames. I can do some basic special effects. I would have brought my old MacBook to its knees. One thing that did happen though, was like there was this one period in time where Final Cut was just, it wasn't itself, it was acting really weird. And it would just stutter doing the most basic tasks. Turns out it wasn't actually the computer's problem. It was just software issue related. And uh, I just updated the thing and it worked perfectly fine after that. Final Cut runs flawlessly now. I'm literally using this thing as my only editing machine and I'm loving it. Granted, I don't edit the most demanding stuff, just some 1080p footage for this year YouTube channel, but for most people, your editing tasks won't reach beyond this, so it'll be just fine. Other people have also edited 4K clips from professional cameras with no problem at all on this laptop. So in terms of video editing, the MacBook Air is great and definitely punches above its weight class. But what about the lack of a fan? This has been a concern for many people since hearing that this machine has no way to cool itself down at all is, you know, it's kind of concerning. Initially, I was also kind of skeptical of the M1 MacBook Air because, you know, no fan, you can't cool it down if it gets hot. So how do the thermals fare? Does the laptop get hot? Well, only under extreme workloads. The workload of the average MacBook Air user, so like browsing the web, Chrome tabs, email, messages, YouTube videos playing in the background, maybe some music. Oh, this laptop will crush that. However, it does get real hot when I'm doing heavy tasks like Minecraft with the CPU soaring to almost 100 degrees Celsius. Without a fan, the computer has no choice but to throttle the performance to try to cool itself back down. This can be a real issue for people with more professional workloads. For the vast majority of people, however, it's not an issue. The best part of not having a fan is that you can't hear your computer screaming for mercy when you bring it to its knees. It's something you come to appreciate. The silence, the beautiful silence of just not having a fan. So to sum it up, generally this MacBook has very solid performance, definitely punches above its weight class. Just like two years ago before M1, this kind of performance, you would not have gotten it in a MacBook Air. This would be MacBook Pro level performance. And now we have it in this thin and light notebook without a fan. Overall, I'd say this laptop fulfills basically everything the average person needs in terms of performance, except for one thing. Now this horse has been beaten to death, but I'm gonna hit it just one more time because, you know, why not? You simply do not buy a Mac for gaming. And honestly, it's not really the hardware that's limiting at this point, it's the software. There simply aren't many games developed for Mac. Popular games like Valorant and Overwatch 
just can't run on it at all. And even games that do run on Mac don't always run optimally. Most games are built for Windows first, Mac second, and it really shows in games like Osu and CSGO. Sure, these games are playable and you can have fun, but you just have a much nicer experience on a Windows PC. And there's always Minecraft, which is the only game I really play on this laptop. Whenever I game on this laptop, this thing gets hot, like almost boiling temperature hot. We're talking like basically 100 degrees Celsius right here. And that probably isn't great for the laptop's longevity, considering this thing doesn't have a fan and has no way to cool off. Now, the fact that this fanless, thin and light, ultra portable laptop can even run CSGO and Minecraft at playable frame rates is absolutely mind boggling. If you tried running games on an older Intel MacBook Air before 2020, your game would look like a slideshow while your computer screams in pain as it sounds like it's about to take off from the runway. The M1 MacBook Air, on the other hand, is actually pretty capable and definitely punches above its weight class. And yeah, I've had fun on this MacBook. And like, for me, it's okay because I've never actually had a proper gaming PC. So this MacBook does perfectly fine for my needs. So yeah, gaming on a Mac. It's possible, but it's not ideal. All right, now let's talk about some of the negatives of this laptop, because nothing is perfect. So I've talked about this before, but port selection. Having two USB-C ports and a headphone jack and nothing else is kind of limiting. So you're gonna have to probably pick up a dongle, which is really annoying. It's just another expense to worry about. And most people don't like that. You also can't really upgrade the device you buy. In a typical computer, you can take the thing apart, buy components for it, and upgrade it if you ever need to. You can't do that here with this MacBook. The parts are all soldered on. What you buy is what you get forever. Now I get that, especially for laptop users, most people don't ever touch the insides of their computer. The thing is, for those who do want more storage, you're gonna have to pay insane upgrade prices to Apple, making a $1,000 computer more like a $1,500 computer. It's pretty expensive. So you're like, oh, that's fine. I don't ever take apart my computer, it's okay. The thing is, having non-removable components means that if any of those parts fail, either you're gonna have to go to Apple for an expensive proprietary repair, or the laptop will simply be dead. The biggest concern here is the solid state drive. If your SSD dies in the future, you'll be left with a fancy paperweight. Honestly though, these SSDs are built to last and you'll probably upgrade your computer before you kill the SSD in this thing, so most people shouldn't have to worry. If you're a power user who uses your hard drive a lot though, you might wanna keep an eye on your SSD health. And also, back everything up. Apple has an excellent backup feature called Time Machine. Use it. If you ever drop your laptop in a lake or something, your irreplaceable data will be safe and sound on a hard drive and you can restore it to another Mac and everything will be just as it was. The last con that I wanna talk about is that this laptop is over two years old at this point, going on three. Now, it's still an excellent laptop, but if you really care about having the latest and greatest design, you might wanna go elsewhere. So, final verdict, you'd be hard pressed to find a laptop that is this well-rounded, that provides this compelling of a package at this price range, especially considering the fact that it's frequently on sale now. This is an excellent laptop that absolutely nails all the basics and it's more than enough for the average person, even if we are talking about the base model. Highly recommend it to anyone who just has average computer user needs, and if you can nab a deal, then that's even better. You might be watching this and you might be thinking, but what about the M2 MacBook Air? Is it worth it to shell out the extra 200 bucks? Should I buy it? And uh, yeah, I've made a video on that actually. You might wanna watch it, it's either there or there, I don't know. And uh, if you do wanna learn more about the disadvantages of Apple Silicon MacBooks, or just MacBooks in general, I have a video on that as well. There's probably up there somewhere. I don't know. I want to go to bed. It's 3.50 right now. Why am I like this? All right, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it somehow, consider subscribing. Maybe give it a like, comment something down below. I don't know, do what you want. But other than that, there's not much more to say. So uh, stay safe, have fun, and be swaggy. And I'm going to go to bed. Goodbye. So yeah, great keyboard. Is it even recording? <laughs> Do I trust it like that? Do I trust it? But generally, the battery life is pretty crazy. What the fuck? Generally, the battery life is pretty crazy. Yeah. Now connected to MacBook and Shut cheese. Shut up. Have a test of the microphone and the camera inserted here instead of this clip of me talking like your Asian dad calling you a disappointment. All right, so a uh, change of scenery because the video stopped recording halfway through.
so uh, now I have to re-record this entire section. But I've been procrastinating re-recording this thing the entire time, and I made modifications to the script. So now it's been like, I don't know, I think a month or something since I recorded the first half of this video. And um, yeah, now it's December 26th. It's freaking 3.27 in the morning again. Finally finished editing at 6.22 in the morning. Oh my god, this is my largest project ever. I want to go to bed. Uh...